What's going on, everyone? So, From Season 3, Episode 4, officially came out. And what a doozy of an episode. Now, this episode, I felt, was very kind of action-packed, right? Had a lot to unpack, a lot to unfold, kind of set up and established uh, what is really going to impact the last half of the season as we move into Episode 5, and then, of course, uh, finish through Episode 10. Uh, however, I do think that they in a lot of ways, kind of tried to pack too much uh, into this, and I felt like there's a lot of things that still kind of need some exploration. Obviously, I'm confident that we will get some of the exploration. I'm sure that we will get some of the details uh, and information that we're waiting on, um, but there were certain things uh, in particular, uh, like the, the Fatima incident right at the end, which we'll cover here in a moment, but like that, for example, I... I thought would have been best served in maybe next episode or a later episode, uh, rather than this one was kind of focused on, you know, Tabitha's return, as well as just kind of trying to save all the people in the ambulance, right, and you just, I felt like had so many things to try to unpack in this episode, where they did the same thing in episode one, I just thought episode one was much more kind of fluid in their approach, and the way that they kind of went about each thing, I felt like they spent enough time to really allow the viewer to digest what they needed to digest, rather than this just had so many different kind of, you know, stories in a lot of ways that were all kind of taken off in different directions that we we need a lot of details on. Uh, but, again, I do have confidence in it. I liked the episode. I don't want to seem like I didn't like the episode. I absolutely did like the episode. I just think it would have been nice to have a little thing, few things kind of more explored in this episode that I hope that we have explored in future episodes. Um, but always, this is my opinion and I want to hear yours, but diving into kind of the breakdown and details of things, right? In this episode, you saw Boyd, uh, as well as Randall and kind of the, the setup and foreshadowing of what was to come, uh, between these two and how Randall is finally on board of trying to, to be a team player, and he wants to help, and he wants to try to get these guys out of here because of the experience that he had uh, from the music box, right? Being kind of lost in his own mind. He talks about how it's worse things than death, and Boyd is kind of trying to set that trap, trying to, you know, figure out how and monitor their, their patterns and stuff, and Randall talks about how, like, hey, these things are creatures of habit, right? Like, they 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 do the same thing every night at the same time. They go about the same things. They they're kind of posted in the same areas, right? Like nothing ever really changes, and you've seen that as a pattern throughout from right. Like a lot of things. Like even Victor talks about how it's never snowed, right? There's there's certain things about this place that are constant and consistent, and you can almost set your watch to it. And yet this time things were different, which obviously, uh, was because of the ambulance showing up with Tabitha, uh, Officer Acosta, as well as Henry, and then two uh, of the EMTs that ended up meeting their demise. Uh, and that, in and of itself, was something that kind of just, right, came, came out of left field for the townspeople, right? You're not expecting that. Boyd's not expecting that. Randall's not expecting that. And then you get to the ambulance, Right? And Tabitha is now handcuffed because she was freaking out uh, because she's back in Fromville and she's trying to explain to all these people that like, hey, we, we need to get to the town. We need to stop. Right? She sees the barn. She's like, stop here so she can get out. And everyone just thinks that she's losing her mind, which, in you know, is fair. Right? Like, you, you look at how everyone responded and you look at Tabitha, she's evaded police She's been missing for some time. She looks homeless, right? She seems a little off her rocker. They were just in an accident, and they're in this town. They're kind of lost trying to navigate this, and you have her kind of freaking out and losing her mind, right? And then they get out. They see somebody on the road. They go to try to assist because that's what they do for a living, and then they get taken out. Now the cop, Officer Acosta, is kind of in this position where it's like, what is? what do we do? What is going to happen? Right. And, you know, you, you really saw the setup uh, and just clear like distress from everybody. And then Boyd gets there and Boyd's like, 
now what? And they end up giving Boyd an ultimatum. And Boyd didn't even hesitate, which I want to say he made the right decision. The Tabitha being handcuffed threw a, a monkey wrench in everything. Right, because she's stuck. So now you have to try to get her out. And it's like, well, if I can get the ambulance working and we can drive around in the ambulance, one, I could save the ambulance, but two, I can at worst buy Jim enough time to get Tabitha free. These things never run. So we may be able to kind of get somewhere safe uh, to where we can be good, right? Like they weren't thinking of, oh, we need a talisman. We need this. We need that. They were thinking there's people in the ambulance. Jim thinks his wife's in there, but they don't know for certain. They don't know what they're walking into. They don't know how many people are in the ambulance. They don't know anything, right? They're going into it completely blind and they're thinking, okay, we're just going to go get the people in the ambulance and either bring them back to the bus or bring them into one of the houses so we can get them safe. That's the idea. That's the goal. That's the mission. And Tabitha being handcuffed and basically being a sitting duck threw everything out the window. So now they're scrambling, trying to figure it out. And then you have one of the monsters basically say like, hey, you know, here's the keys. You want the keys. Can't save everybody. Right. Which plays into Boyd and further try to break him, further try to get inside his psyche. Right. At the end, you see Randall appear to be alive, you know, probably not by <laughs> a huge margin. Right. Like handed on by life. And. To me, that further expresses the trying to break down of Boyd, right? Previously, you know, literally moments before uh, Randall appears on top of the uh, ambulance, Boyd expresses his, you know, kind of the guilt that he has about leaving Randall behind and how he didn't even hesitate, didn't even think about it, which again was the right decision, right? You, you either save Randall or you save everybody. And if you choose the decision to try to save Randall, all of you could end up dying, including Randall. So it's like, Randall's probably a goner either way. I might as well save the people that I can. And Boyd's whole MO is he wants to save everybody. He wants to be the hero. He wants to put on the Superman cape and save the day. And these people, or these monsters trying to break him in every means necessary. He feels this guilt. Well, here you go. Here's Randall. Oh, and we didn't kill him. We left him alive so you can deal with either him dying on in, in your arms, dying on your watch, right? Now, there is the possibility that it's a trap. However, I don't believe my guess, and I'll dive into these theories and ideas in, in, in more detail uh, in, in future videos, but, you know, just to kind of, break down the, the episode itself, I don't believe that it's a trap. I believe they purposely want Boyd. Again, this whole season has been about breaking Boyd, right? They should title this season Breaking Boyd, right? Uh, but in all seriousness, you, you see the aftermath and effects of, of what Randall is going to, or living through and tr or trying to live through, and Boyd is going to have to deal with that. And then if Randall ends up surviving, now Boyd has that guilt. Randall is going to hate him and the town even more. And, you know, he finally did the right thing. And you just kind of left him to die. So you're going to have to deal with those, those lasting effects, that aftermath uh, in this whole manner. Now, the very end, or, well, Randall was the very end, but towards the very end, Fatima. So Nikki who Nikki and Fatima were the ones that had their, the little disagreement about the bathroom when Fatima was in the bathroom too long. And then uh, when Fatima first started to eat the rotten vegetables, you know, Nikki apologized and they kind of had this like, you know, hey, it's all good type moment. Um, well, when uh, Officer Acosta is trying to escape and makes her way to Colony House and is shooting at all of the uh, monsters trying to survive... She ends up shooting through the window and hits Nikki uh, with a stray bullet, right? And Nikki ends up being worked on, and they're trying to get her to survive. Uh, she ultimately ends up dying, and then Fatima, fast forward to when they put her, they wrap her up, put her in the room on one of the beds, 
Fatima plays it off with Ellis that like, hey, you know, I, I, I just, we had this moment, right? I was mean to her. I want, I want a couple moments alone with her to kind of just decompress and, and express, you know, my, my sorrow. So Ellis asks if he, if she wants her, him to stay, he says no. So he leaves, she shuts the door and then proceeds to <laughs> dig through the body. Now it is a pretty, pretty graphic scene. And she goes into the bullet hole and starts generating as much blood as possible and then starts to eat the blood. So now you're starting to see Fatima go from rotten vegetables and dead vegetables to now dead people, which is further evidence and further proof that like, hey, Fatima is clearly either becoming a monster or the child inside of her is becoming a monster, which is, is quite concerning. Right, because this is this is something that is clearly building towards. There's going to be some casualties. There's going to be some lives lost. This is going to be something pretty pretty crazy between her, Elgin, Tilly even has some connections and ties, and then of course Ellis, and then how does that impact Boyd? Right, like you can see the domino effect that this could potentially have on several key characters as well as just the the town in general and the fact that she is you know moving on from the taste of rotten vegetables and stuff to now people dying do we reach a point where Fatima starts to kill people in order to feast right in order to eat does she kind of start having the the quench of blood and the thirst uh does Ellis end up finding out and if he does, does he do something about it? Does he cover for her? Right? Like, there's a lot of different paths that this can go uh, that are very interesting in that regard. Now, another big point was the point, the the phone call, not phone, <laughs> the phone call. And originally, I was a bit disappointed in the phone call. I felt like it was very lackluster. Yes, the, you know, the whole it's Thomas and trying to break Jim down more. I understood the idea, I understood the logic behind it. I did a whole video talking about it and expressing it. But I felt like, I, I, I said in the video that I hope that they continue and, and give us more of, of a, a way to kind of manipulate, particularly Jim and the children. And you saw that, right? One of the very examples I gave that I was hopeful that they would do. Now, I'm not one of these people that have seen this season ahead of time. I am watching this in real time. So anytime I make a theory video, anytime I talk about an idea or anything, it is simply my idea or through the comments, you know, we've worked something out and it's like, hey, this would make a fun video. I don't know what is going to happen. I know some people uh, make videos based on, because they've already seen the entire season. I am not one of those people. I want to make th that very clear. Um, but I relayed that, like, hey, it'd be great if, like, Ethan picked up the phone or, you know, you you relayed to Jim that, hey, Tabitha is still alive. And you kind of use information to gain Jim's trust. And then you can use that to kind of exploit him or create this gap, this wedge, right? And that is something that you're, you're, you saw in this episode, which is great. You saw Jim... Um, or well, Ethan gets the phone or answers the phone, gets the phone call. Then you see Jim basically pick up the phone, have the conversation, then ask Ethan, like, what did it say to you? And says, mom's alive and she's going to be on an ambulance. And then that's what causes Jim to run out there. Ethan originally tries to run out there too, but is stopped by Boyd. And then the, the children, Julie and Ethan end up staying back. Why Jim, Boyd, Randall, uh, try to go and, and help Tabitha, uh, Victor or Tabitha Henry, uh, uh, officer Acosta, as well as, um, the two EMTs. So you kind of get that, but I do like that they continue to expand on the phone call. Right. And I do think that that, that is now going to continue to be a pattern that is still going to now continue to be something that, because now you've given them information that they can use to, to start building that trust. And on the phone call, the voice, who's obviously not Thomas, um, relays that like, hey, uh, 
your children are not your children anymore, which I think is very interesting in and of itself as well. But I don't think it's something where, you know, like, oh, surprise, call Maury, right? Paternity test. No, I don't think it's anything like that. I think it's as simple as Jim is losing his children. He knows it. He can sense it. He can feel it. His children blame uh, him for Tabitha, all that, right? I just think that there's this disconnect and they're kind of preying on that disconnect. Um, but we also are starting to see Victor start to unpack some of these memories. We're starting to see Victor uh, really kind of flesh out uh, uh, some of the details. And we find out a little bit more about the, the big massacre and, you know, Victor, there's too many bodies kind of just laying in the street. He wasn't able to bury them all. So what he did is he took souvenirs and that's how he's starting to remember the people. And he kind of goes one by one. We end up finding uh, a little more information out on Christopher uh, who snapped. And it turns out that Christopher isn't the one that created the massacre, right? Like, you see all the bodies are torn up by the monsters. Christopher, he kind of loses his way. You get a little more details. Obviously, um, we're going to get more unpacked about Christopher. Find out that his he had a ventriloquist dummy uh, that was named Jasper, or Jasper. And that is basically what Victor's looking for now, where we know it, where it's at. It's in the tunnels. Victor knows where it's at because Victor saw it in the tunnels. Uh, so we're going to get some more information in that and unpack Christopher's uh, kind of backstory a little more. But also, uh, the boy in white. It was the boy in white's idea of like, hey, instead of burying all these people, bury the bury mementos that are meaningful to these people so that way you have something that you go back to to remember things, right? And remember the people individually rather than burying each individual body because there's just so many bodies. And Victor and the boy in white end up building this friendship. And Victor even says, it's my friend. It was the only friend I had all those years that I was alone. So the boy in white and Victor clearly have this relationship, clearly have this bond. Um, also, Victor was roasted, I mean, going ham on Sarah. I mean, it is, it was hilarious. I, I don't know if it was meant to be that funny, but I was cracked. This episode had some like really funny moments in my opinion, and I don't know if it was meant to be, but he's talking about like his mom dying as well as he says his sister died, Eloise, which I definitely want to dive into and explore a little more in, in future videos, um, as well as with Christopher, because you know, we were under the assumption Christopher was dead, but it's possible he might not be. So again, we'll, we'll dive into those ideas and theories in a, in a later video. Look forward and stay tuned for that. I'll subscribe to the channel. Uh, but, you know, you you have Victor uh, basically tell Sarah like, hey, you know, my my mother and <laughs> my mother and sister died, but I didn't, you know, just like uh, Nathan, but I didn't kill him, right? Like, and just like go in him. And then I love where she's like, is, is all this is like, it's a fort, right? Like there was just some moments that were, especially with Victor that I thought were very comical. Like, you know, the, the comedic relief. I don't know if that was by design or just was kind of just timing, but it worked in my opinion. It was great. But you're starting to unpack more with Victor, the boy in white, um, as well as several of the other characters that he dealt with in his past. Uh, and then obviously him and his father are now in Fromville together. We have yet to get that that encounter, which we kind of knew wasn't going to happen, right? Based on the way that the episode three ended, right? Victor's getting ready to tell a story to Sarah. You knew that there was going to be, it probably wouldn't be till the next day or so. So hopefully the next episode, we actually get that information. Um, but, you know, Victor is clearly, they're, they're setting up Victor to kind of start piecing things together and really starting to hash out some of these clues. Um, you know, you're, you're going to see Victor most likely next episode go and look for uh, Jasper, uh, which is the, again, the ventriloquist doll. Also, in the trailer for season three, there is a, a scene where you see Jasper in the colony house. And so my guess is that, you know, based on an educated guess through the trailer, I think Victor's going to go down, he's going to go get Jasper and then bring it to colony house. And then you'll have this kind of, th this moment or whatever. And then Elgin will, will 
have the encounter with the, the doll as well from what we saw from the trailer and stuff. So it's going to be interesting to see how that plays out and what kind of information and details because it appeared that Jasper was alive. It appeared that Jasper uh, was communicating with Christopher and they were even having like a little fight, a little argument. Now, is that something that was simply in, you know, like a, a you know, collective delusion where, you know, Christopher was seeing it and it was kind of projecting to where Victor saw it? Or is it something where maybe the doll is possessed uh, is it now possessed by the spirit of uh, Christopher? I don't know. There's a lot of kind of directions that, in which they could go with that. But Victor is is starting to unpack and trying to to remember all the horrific things. Talks about how how much Fromville is changing, and that his mother tried to save everybody just as Tabitha did, did or is currently still trying, and. After that, she failed, and everybody died. So he's worried that the same thing is going to happen again. So he's trying to remember all these things to see if there's a way to potentially prevent it or if there were details that could be beneficial to, like, Boyd and the others to kind of save as many people as possible so that way he's, one, not alone again, and two, maybe, you know, doesn't die himself. So he's really trying to unpack these dark memories. And like he even says, it's never snowed here, right? Things are changing, and they're changing in a drastic manner. Th things aren't just like, oh, like, it's, the trees are spreading a little farther. And No, like, the entire Fromville is altering and changing and becoming its own thing. Um, also, uh, you you got finally the clue, which I touched on briefly earlier, uh, which is that because you saw in the promo um, that Mary uh, Maricela was giving CPR to somebody. My concern was that it was Victor's father, uh, which I was hopeful that it wasn't um, because I really wanted to see that that conversation. I really wanted to see he had to have a moment between those two. Uh, I, I don't mind Henry dying at some point, but you don't want to see him die before Victor and him get to have this kind of heart to heart. Or you know, and 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 how is it? Is it awkward? Is it weird? Is it great? Is it you know? There's just so many different ways that they could approach that, and you don't want to. I just feel like that would have been a real missed opportunity. But now, in hindsight, we know that it was Nikki that was dealing with that. But in general, right, Tabitha's back. They're going to have to deal with the aftermath and kind of blowback of that because I would imagine that, you know, she's probably not just going to stop now, right? And does she kind of distance herself from her family even because does she kind of become obsessed with now that she has more information, now she has more details, trying to get back to the real world so she could save everybody? Because, I mean, she even says... You know, to Jim, when she's explaining to Jim, uh, that, like, what if that was our one opportunity to get out? And I and I failed, right? Like, so does she kind of become obsessed and, and really try even harder now to uh, try to get back out? And then maybe she can get back in and kind of have this back and forth. She talks about Miranda and all that stuff. And then, obviously, Henry, um, Henry being in Frumville, um, you know, what does he do? How does he handle it? Right? Does Victor kind of distance himself? Right? Does Victor does he help Victor kind of unlock things? Is Victor kind of because he didn't really grow up with his father? Right? Like, does he even really look at him and consider him as his father anymore? Yes, he's his blood, but is he kind of like you know I I, I live thirty plus years without you? I I don't know you anymore. I don't know who you are. You don't know me. Right? And he's still very kid like. And he doesn't do well at having to, you know, confrontations and things like that and just remembering things. Like, like does, does it hurt him and impact him more than it would have uh, without the father, right? Like, because now he's got to live with the, the mother's death. And, you know, I'm sure Henry's going to have all kinds of questions and just thoughts and, you know, things that he wants to kind of unpack with Victor. And is Victor going to be willing to do that? Or is he kind of like, you know, no, like, stay away from me type thing? going to be very interesting. But a lot of just really interesting takeaways in this episode. Like I said, I, I really enjoyed this episode. I just, I felt like there were certain things that you could have got, like, even the the kind of heart-to-heart moment. I love the heart and heart moment with about TN and with Kenny and everyone. I just, 
Like, I think that you could have done without that for this episode. If you wanted to do it the next episode and kind of focus more on them in that in the little hut, sure, go ahead, right? Same thing with the Fatima thing. Like, that I felt like was probably best served for a later video. I, I know you can make, like, well, it kind of tied in because, you know, uh, Officer Acosta ended up shooting Nikki, but you could have had the... You know, the, the after, like, that still could have happened, and then Fatima could have, maybe the next day, done that with the body. And then, you know, you had that in a later episode or something, right? Like, there were other ways to go about it to where I would have liked to see them kind of unpack, you know, Tabitha explaining to Jim more, and, you know, kind of the, the, the aftermath of, or even Victor, right? Maybe going into more detail with things, and we kind of unpack some of those things more right like there's just things that again I I, I don't I want to be clear I don't think it was a bad episode I don't think that they dropped the ball in any way I don't think it was anything like that but there's just things that I felt like we could have maybe held off to get some more insight and information in other areas but overall again another great episode I, I'm really enjoying this season I think so far this has been the best season um of the franchise thus far in my opinion but as always, this is a discussion, and I pass a question on you. Let me know your thoughts and opinions down in the comments below. What do you think? How do you feel? What are your thoughts? Um, what did you think of this episode? What did you? Is there anything in particular um, that that you definitely want to see me do like a theory video on or dive into? What are your theories? What are your thoughts? Your opinions? Um, how do you feel? Whatever your thoughts are, love to hear it. So let me know down in the comments below. That being said, if you haven't liked this video, hit that like button. Helps me a lot. So we enjoy these types of videos, and I truly appreciate it. Not subscribe channel, hit that subscribe button. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate y'all. See you in the next one.